Two assistant referees are appointed. Their duties, subject to the decision of the referee, are to indicate when the whole ball is passed out of the field of play, which side is entitled to a corner kick, goal kick or a throw-in. When a player may be penalised for being in an offside position. When a substitution is requested. Other responsibilities for the assistant referee include misconduct or any other incident that has occurred out of the view of the referee. When offences have been committed, whenever the assistant referee is closer to the action than the referee, and whether at penalty kicks, the goalkeeper has moved forward off his line before the ball has been kicked and if the ball has crossed the line. At the start of the match, the assistant referee must position himself in line with the second last defender. Once the ball is in play, the assistant referee should always face the field of play and position himself to judge the offside line with the second last defender or the ball. Here we can see the position adopted by the assistant referee at goal kicks. His responsibility is to check first if the ball is inside the goal area. If the ball is not placed correctly, the assistant referee shall not move from his position, make eye contact with the referee and raise his flag. Once the ball is placed correctly inside the goal area, the assistant referee should move to the edge of the penalty area to check that the ball leaves the penalty area and the attackers are outside. If the second last defender takes the goal kick, the assistant referee should move directly to the edge of the penalty area. Finally, the assistant referee should take a position to check the offside line, which is a priority in any case. When the goalkeeper has possession of the ball, it's important for the assistant referee to position himself so that he can monitor whether the goalkeeper carries the ball with his hands outside the penalty area. He also has to take a position to check the offside line, which is a priority. The assistant referee adopts a position on the intersection of the goal line and penalty area for penalty kicks. Here he can get a clear view of the goalkeeper. If the goalkeeper moves forward off his line before the penalty has been taken, the assistant referee should raise his flag. But only if the penalty has not been scored. When a match ends in kicks from the penalty mark, both assistant referees have a role to play. One assistant positions himself in the centre circle with the rest of the players, and the other assistant is positioned on the intersection of the goal line and goal area. When a goal has been scored, and it's clearly a goal, the assistant referee firstly makes eye contact with the referee, then quickly runs towards the halfway line with his flag not raised. When a goal has been scored but the ball appears still to be in play, the assistant referee shall first raise his flag to attract the referee's attention, then continue with the normal goal procedure of running quickly 25 to 30 metres along the touchline towards the halfway line. Using the beep function is also a good way of alerting the referee quickly and efficiently. As we can see in these examples, the assistant referee's position for a corner kick is behind the corner flag in line with the goal line. In this position, he does not interfere with the player and he can clearly see if the ball is placed correctly in the corner arc. The assistant referee can also assist the referee by stopping the player taking the corner until play can be restarted.
As a general rule, the assistant referee must give no obvious hand signals. However, in some instances, a discreet hand signal may give valuable support to the referee. The hand signal should have a clear meaning. The meaning should have been discussed and agreed upon in the pre-game discussion. Here you can see a good example from the assistant referee. As a general rule, the assistant referee should face the pitch whilst running. Side to side movement for short distances. This is especially important when judging offside. This movement gives the assistant referee a better line of vision. Before sprinting, the assistant referee should be in the ready position. And when sprinting, holding the flag in the position shown here. A fairly recent addition to the communication between assistant referee and the referee is the signal beep system. The assistant referees have a button on their flag, which, when pressed, sends a signal to a receiver box attached to the referee's arm. This device is only to be used as an additional signal, and the beep is only to be used when necessary. Situations when the signal beep is useful include offside, fouls, tight decisions involving throw-in, goal kicks or goals, and to attract the referee's attention. When making a signal, the assistant referee shall stop running, face the field, make eye contact with the referee, and raise the flag with deliberate, not hasty or exaggerated, motions. The flag should be like an extension of the arm. The assistant referee shall raise the flag using the hand that will also be used for the next signal in fouls and throw-ins. If circumstances change and the other hand must be used for the next signal, the assistant referee should move his flag to the opposite hand below the waist. Here we can see assistant referees practicing different flag techniques before the World Cup 2006. Throw-ins are a common feature within the 90-minute period. When dealing with clear situations, the assistant referee must directly show the direction of the throw-in. Hey! The flag should be raised with the appropriate hand, changing hand underneath if necessary. When a throw-in occurs far from the assistant referee's position and the throw-in decision is an obvious one, then the assistant referee should make a direct signal to show the direction of the throw-in. When the ball crosses the touchline far from the assistant referee's position and the ball goes over the touchline and the decision is a tight one, or if the assistant referee is in any doubt, the assistant referee shall raise his flag, make eye contact, and follow the referee's signal. Whenever the assistant referee signals that the ball is out of play, he must continue the signal until the referee acknowledges it. When the ball crosses the goal line near to the assistant referee's position, he shall make a direct signal with his right hand, better line of vision, to indicate whether it's a goal kick or a corner kick. When the ball crosses the goal line near to the assistant referee's position and the decision is a tight one, all in play or out of play, the assistant referee shall first raise his flag to inform the referee that the ball is out of play, 
then indicate whether it's a goal kick or a corner kick. When there's any doubt regarding his decision, the assistant referee must raise his flag, make eye contact and follow the referee's decision. For situations occurring at distance, the role of the assistant referee is less obvious. The referee will be in a position to make the decision and the assistant referee is only recommended to raise his flag to signal the ball has left the pitch. He then follows the referee's signal. The first action the assistant referee makes after an offside decision is to put his flag up. He then uses his flag to signal what area of the pitch the offence has taken place. We can see examples here of near, far and central positions. If the flag's not immediately seen by the referee, the assistant referee must keep signalling until it's been acknowledged or the ball is clearly in control of the defending team. If the assistant referee is not totally sure about the offside offence, the flag should not be raised. The flag should be raised by the right hand giving the assistant a better line of vision. When dealing with substitutions, the assistant referee is firstly informed by the fourth official. The assistant referee then signals to the referee at the next stoppage in the match. The assistant referee does not need to move to the halfway line as the fourth official carries out the substitution procedure. If there is no fourth official, the assistant referee shall assist with substitution procedures. If this is the case, the referee shall wait until the assistant referee is back in position before restarting play. When a foul occurs, the assistant referee raises his flag with the appropriate hand. He uses the electronic beep function and makes eye contact with the referee. He also shows the direction with the correct hand. If the foul is committed by the attacker, the assistant referee must signal with his left hand. And if the foul is committed by the defender, he must use his right hand. This gives the referee a clear indication as to who is fouled. The assistant referee must use the wait and see technique in order to allow play to continue and not to raise the flag when the team against which an offence has been committed will benefit from such an advantage. In this case, it's very important for the assistant referee to make eye contact with the referee. Whenever the referee has not seen the assistant referee's signal, he must keep signalling until the referee has acknowledged it. However, only the referee should apply and signal the advantage. 